Hello, hello. My name is Aisha Harley, and I am one of the founders of the Visionary Leaders Collective. And it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to our live call and or to the podcast if you're listening to the recording. We honor the gifts of the earth and dive deep into wellness solutions using essential oils and other medicinal plants. If you would like to learn about our community offering, please visit www.hellovisionary.life. Please also follow us on Instagram and YouTube. In addition, we would be so grateful if you would take the time to give us a five-star rating on our podcast. We have incredible topics each week, so be sure to stay connected, join us on our live recordings, and invite and please share with your friends. Today, we are learning about Accu Oil Alchemy, and we have a very special guest, Diane Del Reyes. Do you ever wonder where you should apply your oil blends? So perhaps you were on the call last week and you made the thyroid blend or the blood sugar balancing blend, and you're like, where do I put that? Raise your hand if you can relate to that. So that's where Diane comes in. Today, we are going to learn just where to apply the oils and why. Diane Del Reyes is a licensed acupuncturist. She is a doTERRA diamond. She is a business coach and strategist for holistic entrepreneurs, a certified holistic health coach, and an essential oil expert. And for today, very important to know, she is the creator of Accu Oil Alchemy. She has a whole entire course that you can take to learn more than what we can teach you in this hour. So we will then open the call with Q&A with our community and our practitioners to dialogue with Diane, and we will always love hearing testimonials and personal tips from the field in this diverse conversation. If you are new to essential oils and doTERRA, please know by the end of this call, you will know the three cool things about essential oils, the three ways to use essential oils why doTERRA is set apart from all of the rest and how to get these beautiful oils at the very best place. So Diane, thank you so much for joining us today. We are thrilled to be learning from you. I'm going to pass the Zoom mic over to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me in to chat about something I feel very passionate about. And, you know, it's funny, like when I start sharing like i share with my community i'll always add new things to my community of accu oil alchemists and um and i'll i and i have a little membership too and when i start like getting into it i start geeking out and i get so excited so i love it so thank you for letting me share some of this here with you today and i'm gonna i have a little bit of a um a slide presentation to kind of go with what I want to share with you and I'll also be able to download it as a PDF and share it with you as well. So I'm going to share my screen if that's okay. And I'm going to share that. And okay, can you see that? Can you see the slide? We can see yes. it. Anyone on the podcast cannot see it. So podcast yep. listeners, please remember, go to hellovisionary.life, sign up for our newsletter, and you will get these slides. So if Diane references anything and you're like, I really wish I could see that, we're going to have it available for you. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, so as Aisha mentioned, I'm Diane Del Reyes. I'm a licensed acupuncturist. I've been... Um, an acupuncturist uh, and a practitioner of Chinese medicine for uh, over 20 years, if you can believe that, if I can believe that. <laughs> and I love TCM. I love Chinese medicine, um, which TCM, for those of you who don't know, is traditional Chinese medicine. And that's what my, um, that's what my studies, my master's degree is in. And um, when I was introduced to the oils by Dr. Josie, I was pretty reluctant to even um, use oils, uh, but because I trusted her um, and she was telling me about some of the results that she was having with her patients and herself and her family, I decided to try them. Well, it, it was really 
um, profound, like in the first month, and I'm not going to get into it and spend a lot of time here because our time is limited and I want to give it, give you guys as much as I possibly can. But I, I had profound breakthroughs with some of the patients that I was working with and I was working with hard stuff. And I, I, I had like kind of that V8 moment, like palm to the forehead moment where I was like, oh, duh, these oils are just extractions from the herbs that I'm already prescribing as part of my scope of practice, I would prescribe herbs. And these oils are what I've learned since are 50 to 70 percent more um, therapeutically potent than the herb equivalent. So um, my patients were having better results and they were also more compliant because, you know, the oils are pretty awesome. So I know we all love talking about um, natural solutions. So before we, uh, there's going to be some things I want to share with you before I get into actually using the points, because I want you guys to have an understanding about the oils um, and kind of move away a little bit from this this mindset of what oil do I use and what point for this thing, right? So I, run, I want you to kind of open your mind a little bit and understand the oils from a more holistic perspective. And just a little bit about the difference between what is holistic and what is natural, like what's natural versus holistic, because when you treat naturally, that does not always imply that you are treating holistically, meaning we must always consider the symphony and totality of the symptoms as well as a person's constitution. And this is one of the reasons I love Chinese medicine and I love the essential oils because they do that really Really, they both do that really well. So when creating protocols, um, you know, which is something I cover, you know, more deeply in Accu Oil Alchemy, we look, we kind of zoom back and look at everything from a holistic perspective. So when working with essential oils, we are always thinking about um, what, whether I'm doing Chinese, you know, acupuncture or 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 herbs or oils. That the idea is that we want to elicit some kind of change, right? And this can be a physical change, a mental and emotional change. And this is what we call chi transformation, right? And my one of my teachers said, you always, what he says, you always treat the mental with the with the physical. So if somebody's come, you know, complaining of a physical uh, issue, you want to make sure that you're always considering the mental emotional aspect of what that condition is as well. So and Example, when considering emotional change, um, we elicit um, cha uh, emotional change or mood changes. Those are on like a superficial le level, right? We can shift our mood very quickly. We know the oils do really well with that. Um, and this can really be the impetus for changing deeper levels of uh, emotions, like emotions that are at a deeper level. So understanding like the different levels of emotions and the chi level of the emotion, like how deep it is, is really important too. So, and to understand how to create this change using essential oils, we must understand a little bit about the nature of essential oils by understanding how they are grouped or classified. So many of you have heard that oils can be categorized by the top notes, middle notes, and base notes, but what does that really mean? Right. And in each of these categories or classifications, it's important to understand the energetic impact the oils are having and where they are affecting us in our body. So I like to teach how the traditional understanding relates to meaning the top, middle and base, how it relates to TCM um, as a point of view for a more thorough understanding of what these precious oils have and the propensity, what their propensity is in our body. What are these oils doing? The levels that relate to the top, middle and base notes are called in Chinese medicine, Wei, Ying and Yuan source levels. These levels should be viewed and that's like um, re relatively. So Wei relates to top, Ying relates to middle and it's probably sounding like what in the heck are you talking about? But I promise you I'm going to talk about, I'm going to help 
you understand that a little bit more. And these levels just should be viewed as different levels of our experience physically, mentally, and emotionally. And that is what is also referred to as tropism. You may have heard this word. And tropism, tropism is defined as an innate tendency or natural inclination or propensity to act in a certain ma manner. Essentially, like where are the oils going in our body? Essential oils like herbs have an affinity for different uh, tissues, organs, energetic directions and flows and meridians, acupun acupuncture points, and even chakra chakras. So let's start breaking this down a little bit. Okay, just, I, I can't see because I turned off my little thing. Can you guys see the second slide now where it says top notes and wait, G? Actually, no. Oh, hold, please. Uh, uh, hang on one second. How about now? Nope, it's not changing on my end. Hmm. Okay, hold, please. All right. There you go. All right, cool. Um, okay, so top notes um, are often described as fresh or refreshing, pungent or bright fragrance. They, oh, hold on a second. I have to do one little thing to make it. All right, hold, sorry. Okay, pungent fragrance. They are typically like uplifting to the mood. They raise the chi, they uplift the mood. And think of this as like the citrus peels here, um, wild orange, mandarin, tangerine, those are all really good examples of top notes. Now, from a TCM perspective, the top note category relates to the Wei Qi. The Wei Qi in our body is defensive Qi. It flows through the outer layers of our body, actually between the skin and the muscles, and is kind of yang in relationship to the deeper levels of yin. And Wei Qi protects the body from pathogens circulating outside that we are exposed to. And it's the wind actually that carries those pathogens in. So Wei Qi is described as the most exterior aspect of us physically and also emotionally. So when you think about the emotions, think about, again, these fleeting moods, like one minute you could be crying and some friend comes in and makes you laugh and then you're laughing and then you're you're you know our moods can shift so quickly that's like the surface mood that's like really surface and the, our oils these top note oils have a quick effect like think about like when you're when you're smelling or wild orange like that immediately is sunshine in a bottle so it has that shift shift so think about what you're exposed to de daily, the path pathogenic factors, yes, of course, but also your env environment, like people, uh, the, the news constantly, the social media scroll, like what is that environment like and how, how do you get to protect yourself? And these top note chi, uh, wei chi oils really help. Um, okay, now let's talk about the next ones. Can you see the second middle? Middle notes? I think you can. Yes. Okay, cool. So the middle note oils are typically the floral, they're sweet uh, and green in fragrance category. They, they heart what's called harmonizing the middle. So they kind of go deeper in the organ systems and can be very centering these oils. They impact a deeper level of chi known as ying chi. This is the ying chi level. And from an emotional perspective, the ying chi level um, and middle notes have the ability to start working, the oils start working on the emotions at a, dip, uh, um, a deeper level, right? The emotions that have been circulating around in our body for a while and maybe we, we haven't really addressed. Um, so as you can imagine, this is different a little different than the more exterior, quicker moods that shift. Um, this is definitely a deeper level, but also sometimes like you use the oil, these kind of, when we're talking about these kinds of emotions, you can use both of the oils. One is like, you gotta shift the, that, that quicker mood, that, that, that more fleeting mood so that you 
can deal with that deeper level, if that makes sense. So you can start, you, you know, start playing with the oils and using both of them. And then the base notes oils can reach what we call the Yuan source chi level. It's the deepest part of our cells. It's our primordial chi derived that, you know, happens actually at conception that we're born with. And it's derived from Jing, which promotes and uh, stimulates more of the functional activities of our organs. So this is like, this is the much deeper level, like source, like we need everything baseline working better. So this is the source of Jing essence, our constitution, our organ system. Um, the organ that's most involved here is the kidneys because that's where Jing is stored. So these oils can um, work on more chronic conditions. So we, we like uh, a lot of the wood and root oils are really what works at this level. So now that we kind of talked about the different, I mean, I go way more into it in, uh, I have a little pre-course, a little kind of foundational pre-course um, that taught, really breaks down even more these different, um, these different categories. But I wanted to kind of give you just a taste of it because I want to kind of get into the, a little bit more into the juice of it. So now that you have a little better understanding about how to categorize your oils, now what do you do with them? Right? That's like the hundred dollar question, million dollar question. So essential oils, um, think about this word essence and jing. So essential oils, the word come, the word essential comes from the word essence, which translates to jing. So I had that moment where I was like, oh, essential oils are like the jing of the plant. They're like the most essential part, just like the jing, that primordial chi in our body. So I had that like aha moment one day when I was thinking about the word jing and I was like, whoa, that's cool. <laughs> so see, I nerd out on this stuff. So it's like, how do the, that the essential oils and acupuncture, acupuncture points come together? because obviously we're not doing acupuncture, but we're using oils. It's kind of like needless acupuncture. Um, and the acupuncture points are where the chi accumulates, right? So we have hundreds of acupuncture points. I mean, there's no way I can take my master's degree and give it to you in 30 minutes, but um, I want you to understand like what's happening, like all these acupuncture points, like the oils, have functions and energetic properties and 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 um, actions and when you put those together that's where the magic really happens so i'm going to talk about three different different examples um, and points to emphasize here now remembering the holistic part of this conversation as a reminder the, this medicine is not a one size fits all. And that's why I love the oils because it kind of, it, it really married the, the principles of Chinese medicine so well. So there's so much to consider when putting protocols together. And I love, just, just as an example, it's like Aisha talks about how she, she, her sleep was changed because she used Slim and Sassy, which is an energy tonic, but it balanced her blood sugar, which was the root cause of why she wasn't sleeping. So you see like everybody's reason for not sleeping is not necessarily the same. I actually had a member just the other day uh, sent me a Facebook message and said she was having massive headaches and you know typical you know like go to for most people is peppermint for headaches but the reason why she was having headaches is because she was stressed out and her bread, blood pressure was going going way up so i gave her a protocol to treat the root like so i said here use these oils on this point and then her she texted me like minutes later and her and she's a nurse so she's always checking her blood pressure her blood pressure came way down and she it was just 
so cool. It was so cool. So just, I just want, I just feel like I need to say that in order to, so people don't say, this is the only thing to do and the only point and the only oil. And this is what you do exactly when this comes up. So onward. Okay. So the first point I want to talk about relates to sleep and insomnia. And I actually just did a, you know, a training for some of my members about all all the different insomnia reasons that, you know, reasons why people have insomnia. So I want to start with this point called on me on. And this point actually translates and uh, to English meaning peaceful sleep. So pretty much I chose this point because it, in, the, in most cases, you're going to have accompanying uh, points and oils, but you can always use this point. And the way you find this point, because I know people are going to ask, um, is at the bottom of your, your, the bone behind your ear, which is called the mastoid process, and a point called gallbladder 20, which is underneath the occiput in, uh, you know, if you kind of go to the center of your spine and you move over the, you know, the trapezius, which is the muscle there, you'll fall into kind of a, um, a depression. And if you go halfway, if you draw a line between the mastoid, bottom of the mastoid process, process and that point which is called gallbladder 20 right in between that's where on me on is so this is a really good general point to use to help support sleep so um i really like using uh lavender for this point now again we're always going to re consider the root cause is it an excess condition or is it a deficiency condition which organ systems are involved. As an example, it can be the organ system and meridian could be the heart, which it, the insomnia could be caused by heart chi and or blood deficiency. And so in that case, you want to use oils that are going to nourish and tonify and or it can be an excess condition, which be hot heart fire. And in that case, you want to you want to drain the fire, you want to cool the fire. So you would choose different points for those reasons. So um, I hope that makes sense. Um, the second example, and, and we're gonna take questions afterwards. Um, the second um, point I wanna talk about, and you may have heard me talk about this point before, it's called Shen Men. Um, it's the gateway to the spirit is how that point is tra uh, tra translated. And by the way, these two points, are what's called extra, these first two points I'm talking about are called extra points in, 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 the, um, in our uh, acupuncture system. And they don't fall directly on an acupuncture uh, meridian. So these are extra points. So the way you find this point, the Shen Men point, is um, it's basically the upper third of the ear in a depression called, which is called the triangular fossa. And so, when we're needling it, it's way more specific um, how to how to find the point. But generally, I mean, you're using oils on your finger, which, by the way, I should tell you how to do that. Um, if you're putting the oil on your finger um, and you're putting your finger in that point, in that little depression, that triangular fossa, you're going to hit the point. <laughs> and you want to this is not acupressure. This is really about the oils, uh, the energy of the oils meeting the energy of the point, right? So bergamot is a great oil to use on this point. It's unique in so many ways. It's, it's actually a, a citrus that's considered a middle note or a middle tone. So there's no hard and fast rules. It's so funny, you guys, like when somebody says, I have this going on. What should I, uh, what point in oil should I use? I'm always like, I'm always like, uh, I always feel dumb. Like, I don't sometimes know what to say. I'm like, I gotta know more. I gotta, I, you gotta put your investigative hat on a little bit and, and ask some questions. And I, in AccuOil Alchemy, I talk about exactly all the questions to kind of put the pieces together. You become a little, you know, sleuth and you, you figure it all, all out. And it's really fun putting that puzzle together. But bergamo is great because it it actually um, it regulates 
um, blood sugar. I mean, I'm sorry, it regulates your um, left and right brain hemisphere, but it has a regulating quality, meaning that if you're too anxious or too low, it's going to bring that back into balance. So it's very regulating. It actually falls in the middle tones and not in the uh, upper notes. Um, so it's more in that ying chi, not the, uh, and that nutritive chi, um, and not that uh, wei chi level, which is surprising because it's the citrus, right? It's a citrus peel, but it's, so there's no hard and fast rules is basically what I'm saying. So it's sweet, it regulates, it balances, and it restores. And then when you're using it on Shen Men, it's actually really good for conditions, again, I can't say the real name of the condition, but let's just say some people get really manic and some people get really low. And so it actually helps bring that into balance. I had a patient who had that condition and it worked wonders on her. It was really, really powerful for her. Um, and the third example I want to use is a point called spleen three. Now the point, um, is located on the inside of the foot below the ball of the big toe. It, it lies on the side of the foot pretty much at the juncture, you know, where you're the, the red and white part of the skin for most people, for most, I don't know, like my, my bottom of my foot is definitely more white and then the top is more red. So it's kind of where that skin color changes right there. Um, and that's kind of the inside arch, right? So if you're using an oil like, um, what the, oh, so this point is really good. It's an earth point on the earth channel and the earth element flavor is sweetness. So this actually, this point is good for balancing blood sugar and the oil that you use on this point is geranium. So geranium is like what we call the iconic um, oil for the earth element. So it actually, when you're using it on spleen three and you can actually use it spleen three to spleen four, which is just, if you go towards the heel directly in that same line about two inches and you use it every day, that's gonna start balancing your blood sugar. So the earth element again relates to sweet, and um, this oil is a, a middle tone oil that um, has sweet as its nature. So those are, so those are three examples um, of how you can use oils on points and kind of start thinking about it in, in a different way and understanding the energetic profile of the oils and then starting to learn a little bit more about the the act the the points function and action as well and putting those little puzzles together so it's super fun so those are my examples those are the categories i have no idea what time it is oh we got lots of time cool um so we have tons of time oh my god i must have been talking really fast um because I just wanted to share, uh, we can do lots of Q and A because I'm done with my presentation. So if you have other examples that you want to ask me about, we can talk about that, whatever questions you have. But I also want to give you an opportunity to um, get my mini training on the, uh, on the classifications, the, um, the energetic, essential oil energetics and classifications um, at a really good price, uh, 17 bucks. And it's a three-part training, and you also get a really cool ebook with it. And um, if you use this um, link, which I think um, Aaron has a, uh, that link, and that will get you eighty dollars off of that. So it's a special link that I created for our community. So it's bit.ly forward slash v l e o e eight zero. And we'll put it in the show notes and in the right. email that goes out. Okay, great. So there's a question in the Q&A, Diane. Okay. Um, Tina is asking, what is the K13 point useful for? Uh, K13. I don't know. <laughs> See which one she's talking about. 
Um, oh, it's on the. It could be. The is it foot? kidney? Oh, kidney three. Oh, that. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it, got it. On the slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I used that slide for something else, and that was the only point I had. That was the only slide I had a picture of spleen three on. But kidney thirteen is the actual source. It's it's, it's not thirteen. It's kidney three. It's K I three. So kidney three. Um, and it's the source point of the kidney. So it's amazing to support like more chronic conditions, but it's also really good for yin deficiency, especially women in like menopause years. Um, that's a really, really powerful point and a really good oil to use on that is um, uh, black spruce. So black spruce is really powerful for tonifying kidney chi. Diane. We have yes. two questions. One question is from me. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my dog is suffering with a kidney infection. So is it a similar point on dogs? Do you know anything about? Um, you, know? you could you could look it up. I've done some uh, some dog acupuncture, but yeah, it's it is in a similar location. Um, so it would be like the back back legs, right? Um, so basically, the way you find kidney three on humans is it's on the inside ankle if you go between the high point of the ankle and the back of the achilles tendon and you draw a straight line you fall in a depression right there so it's it's um yeah you'll you'll feel kind of a soft spot there right in between on the inside angle ankles um so yeah i would definitely i would also do there's um it's going to be harder to find but um bladder 23 which is on the um level with uh the lumbar i don't know about dogs but like i'll look up i'll look up dog yeah spine. yeah there's a really good point on his back of his spine so good to remember okay Anne is asking can you give us some more examples of oils that act as regulators such as bergamot so i think she must be talking about emotional regulators um that have kind of, yeah. So in other words, like kind of have that adaptogen, adaptogenic kind of, I don't know. I mean, I think. I would say Melissa, I've heard a lot of good things about Melissa and that emotional highs and emotional lows. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Anybody yeah. has ideas, put it in the comments. Yeah, I would love to. I, would love I to was just that. curious what you would think about putting adaptive on the ear points. Yeah, absolutely. I would use adaptive on the Shen Men, Shen Men, um, hundred percent. I would also use it on Heart Seven, um, which is like if you follow your pinky down to your wrist crease, and it's on the la on the outside. Out, you'll feel a tendon. You make sure you're on the outside part of that. No, inside part of that tendon. And Carolyn recommended Tulsa, Tulsi. So yeah, that would definitely be a good one as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Probably any of the oils in the Symphony of the Cells amoebic protocol. Isn't that protocol for like all those kind of intense emotional things? And they have like frankincense and rose and jasmine and. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. Rose. I mean, so like, like the woman who had the high blood pressure, I had her use the oils on, on heart seven. I had them use uh, and basically uh, I think I recommended for her um, uh, a lot of the floral oils because uh, they help kind of their relaxants, right? So they help calm and relax. So, so I, use, I had her use like rose neroli, uh, alang alang is actually one of the best ones and jasmine and lemon is actually really good for regulating um, blood pressure. So I had her put it in a roller ball and if you use it on heart seven you could just like hold those points together and you can kind of just feel everything just go and you start feeling like when you're holding the point when you're when you're holding the oil to the point um you want to start kind of feeling that kind of what we call, in chinese medicine we call it the chi like d chi and the chi and you and it's like you start feeling the chi change you can feel the energetic shift um, in the point. Um, for me, like when I'm needling it, if I'm needling it, it, I always know like how far to go with the needle because it feels like you're hitting like kind of the side of a balloon. And so it's like you 
just get right there. Um, where when I'm using oils on the points, um, I feel kind of a, a bubbling warm sensation come up. So, I mean, everybody has their own experience of what that would feel like, but it's really um, not too often do I say use pressure, like if you have a headache, LI4, large intestine four, which is between these two points, between these two fingers, if you just kind of go back, it'll be super tender. Um, then sometimes and I'll just say for the that, podcast, she's oh talking right. about the thumb and the pointer right in there. Yeah. That meaty part kind of yeah. hurts. Yeah, you know? it's pretty tender on the top of the hand. In that, yeah, follow the web down. You kind of almost fall into it. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, we have a couple stuff coming up. Um, well. Rebecca and Nikki are talking about they've been trying Devana in the Shenmen point ah, and and uh -huh. having um little little amazing um orgasmic freakouts on the chat. It sounds mm -hmm. like nice. <laughs> so it sounds like that might be a good one on the Shenmen point. And then I know you kind of answered it, but I thought we'd go in a little more detail. Nikki was asking, where would you recommend putting oils for hormone balance, especially for hot flashes? So you talked about black spruce on kidney three. Is there any more you would think yeah. of for hormone yeah. balance hot flash? Yeah, 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 for sure. So so when, when it comes to like hot flashes or menopausal symptoms, let me definitely kidney three, you can use uh, also juniper berry there, but let me so a lot of like what happens in um during menopause and this goes a little bit into the yin yang principles yin yang, yin yin yang theory so yin and yang is not just a cool hippy dippy sign it's actually a diagnostic tool that we use in chinese medicine and what happens during menopause is our if yin and yang are balanced then all is well with the world and where things are going well but what happens is our yin becomes deficient. And so if you think about yin as your air conditioner and yang as your heater, and your yin is becoming deficient, then you have what's called relative heat. It doesn't mean you have like, so a lot of people like treat, treat it by like, we gotta cool, every, cool everything down, cool everything down. Of course, you wanna feel better. But what happens like, and as an example, black cohosh, so I would always see like everybody using black cohosh for their, for their um, hot flashes. And I kept saying like, why isn't that in our, our yin deficiency um, uh, uh, herbal formulas? And then I finally found it and it said it, it's actually contraindicated for yin deficiency. And so, and it's because it's not like we need to nourish yin not decrease the heat we need to nourish yin so it's back in balance it's kind of unanchored this heat is not anchored by our air conditioner so vetiver is the best yin nourishing oil we have i think i love that oil so you can use that on kidney one because um which is directly at the bottom of the foot um, or you can use it at, on kidney three as well. Well, kidney one is the middle of the bottom of the foot. Middle of the bottom of the foot. So, so just if you took your foot, which I have my foot right here. Yeah. You're like right about, is that, I like a to little go. Up. You can just kind of rub this area. It's, but up, would it's a, right about yeah, there. Right about there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So yeah. it's kind of at the base of the long end of the ball of your foot and then the maybe two thirds up up your foot two thirds up your foot and pretty much in the middle yep yeah that's a great point oh, yeah Ying spring. diane i might have a controversial question here to throw in <laughs> okay <laughs> so answer however Bring it on. <laughs> okay so if you're like Oh, I can't remember those points that Diane said, but I remember it was the foot and it was vetiver and you just massage your whole foot in vetiver. Will you yeah. still have results or like how important is it to pinpoint the point? Um, you know, I, you will still have results. Yes. A hundred percent. Um, but one of the things that I really love is just holding the point for 30 seconds, seconds to up to three minutes, like hold that point. So it'll just amplify, like when you're getting on the point, 
you're, it's just going to amplify when you're, when you're kind of just holding that point for 30 seconds or more. Okay. So then this is the follow-up question from Inoka. Is there a particular acupoint chart you could recommend? Like, is there a cheat sheet? Do you have a cheat sheet in your course? Could I laminate something and put it by my bedside? <laughs> to remind me? Hundreds and hundreds. So I actually just recently found this book and I got it and now I recommend it to some of my Acu Oil members. It's, it's, acupuncture points handbook for patients so mm. it, it's it's a really good super basic but it'll tell you how to get to the point it'll tell you a little bit about the point it doesn't go deep into it but i it's perfect for the patient all right so aaron let's include that reference in our um our, yeah. our mailing yeah can you can you news? so i can grab huh? it can you say the yeah. name again? Yeah, it's Acupuncture Points Handbook by Deborah Bleeker, LAC. And there, there it is. So they like we have that. A couple, book. they're not questions, but they're they're good statements. So Linda's saying that, you know, if you don't have vetiver, it's in it's in a lot of formulas. It's definitely in peace. Yeah. So you have the, the emotional aromatherapy. It's also in serenity and then elizabeth mentions for uh high blood pressure right so even like that headache situation you could have put on this point maybe serenity right because it's i mean serenity is really like almost a high blood pressure formula right because that she's saying and it's true it has lang lang marjoram wood oils like vetiver and lavender yeah i mean that's really good i like all the flower oils like rose and and um lang lang and anything that has a lang lang in it yeah for sure and, or an aerolia rose or anything like that any of the floral oils um really powerful and lemon in your water like mm, yes yeah i i mean that is really regulating for blood pressure for sure and yin tang is a really great point for stress too the point between your eyebrows, really nice. Lavender is really nice there. I like that. I would put that on my patients all the time. So it's the yin tang is the point right between your eyebrows. They call it the third eye. So it's really great, like um, for you know your vision, right? Like your so it's like opening up your vision and your intuition, and it's also good just for calming, relaxing stress as well. Um, yeah. And then bladder two, which is on the outsides of the eyebrow, insides of the eyebrow, sorry. Um, I, if you get right there, that's really good for sleep as well. I like to, like it, when I would needle it, I would always needle it down to kind of induce like that sleep, that relaxation. So you can use oils and kind of almost massage it down, like just rub it down, like hold it and then, I don't know, go down. Do we have any other questions from the community? I'm gonna check on Facebook. Feel free to <coughs> post the chat. Is this helpful and fun or is it just me? <laughs> oh, it's super, it's super inspiring. I'm like, I'm, I just put that book in my shopping cart. Okay, cool. Yes. <laughs> you know so what great. I think is a great level. one to review is like nausea. Hmm. Or isn't yeah. that like this point somewhere? Yeah. No, that's really, no. Nausea, I would, what I would do for nausea is um, like, so that's called rebellious stomach chi. So when you're nauseous, like the, the energy of the stomach meridian is downward. So when you're having nausea, that energy, that chi is going up. So you want to bring it down. So that re rebellious stomach chi. So I would use CV12, which is a bit like halfway between the rib, the, the rib cage, where the rib cage meets and the belly button. That's called the xiphoid process. It's usually tender. And right in between, if you draw a line in between that stomach, um, that's CV12, which is called the front move point of the stomach. So that's a really good point. And then stomach 36, which by the way, you guys is the, Oh, oh, there's so many good points for nausea. Uh, um, stomach 36, which is like one of the best points for just general tonification and immune support is stomach 36. And the way you find that is on the outside of your knee, like here's your kneecap, right? And if you take your 
four fingers breadth um, on the outside of your knee and you go to the bottom underneath your knee. Um, and this is the, the fibula, or the tip, the crest of the tibia. It's right, it's really tender. It's right in there. Uh, four fingers breadth below, um, right at where these two, the knee and the tibia meet. So I can find a point for that too. So that's really good. And then, and then also, um, depending what the nausea is like, if there's like stomach heat, like heat involved, you use stomach 44, which is kind of between the, the second and third toe in the web. <laughs> and also it, that's good is P, uh, pericardium um, six, PC six, which is two fingers breadth below the wrist between the two tendons. So you, if you kind of go two fingers breadth and then you'll, you'll kind of just fall into it. I That's only have the one I've used that yeah. down here between my lip. I guess I meant like a not car sickness, nausea, where you're kind of motion sick. Yeah. And there's yeah. like, well, this is more like if you, that point, like if somebody passes out, you use that point right there. You just like, if somebody passed out, you just wail on that point, man, <laughs> they will wake up. Uh, so yeah, so PC6 is really good, Part pericardium six, really calming, like a, like anything in the chest, like chest tightness too, pericardium is that, the, what we call the gatekeeper of the heart, right? So emotionally, pericardium six is so good for so many things, really good. Yeah, two this fingers This is breath. awesome, Diane. Very fun to go and take our oil usage up to the next level. Yay. So any more questions from anyone? Okay, here we go. Does the acupuncture points handbook include essential oils? If not, is there a book that includes both? No. Diane has to write that book. Yeah. But right now you can take Yeah, it. it's like you can get Diane's it. course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, take the course. I think Diane is one of the only people really talking about acupressure and oil. So she's awesome to learn from. Yeah, I've been doing this for a long time. It was 10 years ago when I started working with the oils. It was probably a, just a year later. I was like, I, I wanted to understand them from the framework of Chinese medicine because that's how my brain works. And so I started studying. And when I realized one of the things that was missing was helping people understand, unless you're an acupuncturist, I want people the lay person, if you will, to understand the basic principles of Chinese medicine. And in the course, I teach that to you so so you can understand it better in a, in a really simple way. And especially like the five elements, which is so much fun. Oh my God, the five elements and, and how it relates to our emotions. And oh my gosh, it's, it's so much fun. Okay, we have two um, health concern and they're asking for points. Okay. One is vertigo. Where would you put oils for vertigo? Yeah, I mean, that's another one. It's like, what's the cause of the vertigo, right? Is there like something what we call in Chinese medicine, phlegm, phlegm fire, uh, or liver wind? Uh, I would have to know more information and really look at treating the root. But I, I mean, I love, I love using um, oils like... Um, like balance for vertigo because it's often liver wind and blue tansy actually is one of the best points that um, has an affinity for the liver channel. So using it on liver three, which is between the, the first two points, kind of similar uh, as LI4, but between the first and second toe on the top of your foot. Uh, and it's tender for most people, liver three, that, that really, um, helps regulate the chi and blood um, flow throughout the whole body. They freeze the flow of chi is what we say. And we want free flow and chi. We don't want stuck chi and we don't want deficient chi. Sunny's clarifying that it was a brain lesion due to a stroke. Mm. I, I would have to like probably do like- Yeah, that's kind of complicated. Yeah, complicated. It's, 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 it's a lot. Yeah. Look at marjoram. I have had some success with sipping on marjoram tea. Mm, nice. Uh, okay. The other one is anything that you can do to support someone on dialysis. I would do, um, I would definitely 
be using like kidney three. Um, I'd be using point, like just, in, just for sake of not worrying about where the point is in the back, get oils like uh, juniper berry and black spruce um, kind of over the kidneys in the back. And then kidney three, um, that's, those are some of the points I would use. Great. Um, okay, so I think we're gonna start to close up here. Any last comments or um, bits of wisdom you wanna share, Diane? Oh, um, no, just like, just always consider, I mean, I, I know we live in a Western medicine world, even though we're treating naturally, let's treat more holistically. So basically, if you take your fists and you put them behind your hand, uh, behind your back, you're going to hit, you're going to pretty much get over your kidneys. That's kind of the best way to find your kidneys. Oh, I thought of one last question for you, Diane. Sure. Um, I like to, on. and there's other people who like to put essential oils in their belly button. Yeah. Why does that feel so good? And what is about, what is it about that point? Um, so that's, a, that's like a point. What, what I love about that point is that you, we are not allowed to needle that point. So having alternatives to, to that is really, is really powerful. So like I would always put, so, uh, be, when I couldn't needle it, I would take like uh, a slice of ginger and, and then put moxa on it for somebody who was having digestive issues. So like any kind of spleen chi deficiency. And then I would warm up the warm up, like I burn the moxa cone on top of the sliced ginger. But it's like putting ginger oil in your belly button. So good. So good. Yeah. So it's, and it's right on what we call the conception vessel. So it's going all the way up and down the body, front of the body, the middle section. It's one of my favorite spots, especially I love putting spike nard there. Mm. I put in my belly button. Interesting. I have to and of course, we've all been putting cilantro in our belly button. Right. Oh. <laughs> Not all of us. <laughs> Not all of us. <laughs> I like Dr. Josie's recommendation of Zendocrine. That's what I've been doing. I would do Zendocrine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Zendocrine in the belly button okay. is, is amazing. I can handle that. Just think of that like warming sensation. That's really nourishing. It's so nourishing on the body. Nanette has her hand up. Is that, is that for? Anything? Nanette, did you have some, you can unmute if there was something you wanted to ask. I think it maybe is a mistake, but. Okay. All right. So Diane, thank you so much. I love this wisdom. I hope everybody got a ton from it. Uh, we're going to put everything in the show notes. So how you connect with Diane, how you can take her course, how you can get $80 off. So that $97 course for $17. And we're going to put the book in there. And of course, remember to go to hellovisionary.life to sign up for our visionary newsletter that comes out every Wednesday. That's how you get access to the recordings. This is a podcast. This is also a YouTube video. And we collect all the protocols. So Diane is going to give us the slides with all the pictures and we'll throw it into the Google Drive. I'm just going to wrap up our call a bit here to make sure that we kind of touch on some of the basics that we appreciate touching on, which would be, first of all, the three cool things about essential oils. We're talking about a putting essential oils on your skin. And in order to put essential oils on your skin, they have to be safe, which means they have to be pure. And it's only doTERRA essential oils that have done that. We're also talking about putting essential oils on points that can affect great change in our health, but that will only work if they're effective. And the doTERRA essential oils are completely effective. And what I love about essential oils too, is that they're affordable. If my daughter gets an earache, I can use some tea tree, some basil, and I am most likely going to avoid a doctor's visit and a prescription. We've talked a lot about the topical use of essential oils, and that's gonna be great when you're using these acupressure points or you want to address something that's targeted like a stomach ache or a headache, but you can also take them internally and you can also smell them aromatically. Of course, when you're doing the points, you're still gonna get that aromatic inhale, which will be good for balancing your hormones and uplifting your mood clearing out your airways. 
And then we talk about doTERRA here because doTERRA essential oils are the best. My three favorite things about doTERRA is their dedication to purity and potency. We'll talk about that over and over again. You've got to have a pure oil and it has to work. And doTERRA really checks all the boxes there. Then doTERRA is dedicated to sustainability, which is super important to me. If you like to learn about where do the plants come from, how are they grown, who are the people growing them, you can look up co-impact sourcing from doTERRA. And it's a whole nother um, storyline of these beautiful plants. Then doTERRA is also dedicated to leadership and they want all of their wellness advocates. That's what Diane is and myself, Aisha and Josie. We do this as our business and they want us to be free to give. So they really foster that within their community. So if there's anyone on the call that is brand new and you don't have doTERRA essential oils in your life, this is a great time to get started. You can pick out an enrollment kit and specifically right now, doTERRA does a cool thing where if you order up to $150, if you put together your own kit, it's $150 or more, you're going to get your wholesale membership for free, which is usually $35. So that's a great way to do it. You can just talk to the person who invited you to the podcast, or you can reach out to one of us by clicking our contact info in the show notes. Next Monday, we're going to hear from athletes, adventure athletes, Taylor Jones and Will Wan. Will is also a licensed acupuncturist. They're going to come and share their tips for recovery. So if you are an athlete, if you know any athletes, write down their name, pull up your phone right now, invite them to the call next week. Of course, we always get these episodes on the podcast. So it makes it really easy for you to share with people if there's a topic that you feel like they would resonate with. And that brings me up to a really important perk about your doTERRA membership. When you get a doTERRA wholesale account, doTERRA actually gives you the opportunity to earn commissions. So if you like sharing this knowledge with friends, if you like introducing people to essential oils, make sure your account is set up in the right way so that you can earn a commission check. It can help you pay for your oils and it can even help you save for something like a vacation. We absolutely love learning with you and growing with you. We hope that you experience deep wellness and sustained peace as you bring these oils into your home. Thanks again to Diane and everyone who contributed. What a great call today. We love you so much and we'll see you next time. Bye everybody. Bye everyone. Thank you, Diane. Thank you for having me.